All right, hello again, guys. Um, just wanted to do a quick uh, review of this Cut Pewter Advance I recently purchased. So uh, in my reviews, I like to focus on use cases or my particular use cases instead of just going over the, the hardware aspects of it because there are other videos and other much more intelligent folks out there who are gonna do a be much better job of going over the specs and functionality of this. But quickly, what do you get uh, with this thing? Um, again, you get keyboard input, QWERTY keyboard input, uh, little LCD screen, and it has a microphone input along with uh, audio jack output. Uh, so if you want to do something built like an MP3 player, uh, which other folks have done, you could do it with this. And uh, again, it's really solidly built. This advanced one has, uh, importantly has this uh, port to input, uh, so you could add additional peripherals. And I think the peripheral that they have now is a LoRa GPS module. But um, you know, I would love to see uh, e-paper module or just a basic LCD module to give you a, a larger screen that you could use with this. But overall, this device is really impressive in my opinion. It's uh, quite flexible and um, you could see the flexibility of it if you go to the M5 Burner app, if you use that app and you could see what firmware other people have done for it. It's probably one of the more popular um, M5 stack devices out there. So there are quite a few uh, firmware, including uh, those I guess for quote unquote testing wireless networks. Um, somebody also did a Doom port for this and uh, that kind of surprised me at first that you could get Doom running on this. But when I looked up the performance in, in MIPS versus my first computer, which was I think a 46, 33 megahertz, turns out this thing is just, uh, I believe at least 10 times faster, five to 10 times faster. And as far as MIPS is concerned, it, it's roughly uh, that of a Pentium 2, which is quite uh, shocking. So we have this little computer in our hands and that, uh, you know, was uh, faster than the computer in my uh, college days. Again, as far as MIPS is concerned. But that being said, let's uh, see what my uh, particular application was, right? So um, originally I wanted to use it for a scientific calculator and uh, that connects to my desktop computer so when I'm teaching I could be doing the computation on the device and then the students could view it on the projector. Uh, that was a great plan until I got the actual device in hand and uh, for someone my age with my eyesight I quickly come to, came to the conclusion that there is no way I could practically use that as a calculator. The buttons are just too tiny and for an application requiring constant input and viewing on the screen it's it won't be it's not practical for me to do it if you're a young person who uh, very good eyesight tiny fingers yeah i guess you could make it work but for me it wasn't uh, it wasn't gonna work so uh, i put it away put it in the drawer and then um you know i was like okay i need to find something to do with this after about a month and then it occurred to me that I was a, you know, I'm a big into vintage audio and VU meters and all that stuff. So I like the, and I, I collect them and so forth. But I was wanting to get a, a VU meter display that I could easily put on my computer screen or my TV screen. And uh, then looking at uh, one of the samples, the mic input samples, I realized, hey, this has a uh, waveform. You can display a waveform of the mic input. So really, all I need to do is to take this waveform and uh, send it over the network uh, to a web app and this is what the, this is what I ended up doing so this is the application that's um, uh, it, firmware that is running I call it I call it uh, uh, my talk so the microphone is talking to you um, so it essentially takes uh, input from the mic and it has a built-in web server and then transmits the data, but also stores the form, the HTML and JavaScript and CSS uh, text for the web app that it serves as well. So that, it just blew my mind that uh, this device could do all of this uh, with very little overhead. Um, for example, I could connect up at least 10 clients up to this and uh, it, they still, give you rather fluid um, VU meter performance and um, yeah so uh, 
definitely recommend this uh, this little device if you want uh, ESP32 uh, system with maximum flexibility. Uh, it, this is this is wonderful. However, if you're looking for something where you need to actively input text all the time and read the screen all the time, uh, I would say this is probably you know it's probably a little too too small for an application like that. All right, let's uh, now talk about the code in the application itself. So the firmware that runs on there was my first attempt to actually use uh, Vi coding and uh, uh, you know, with one of the LLMs. And the LLM that I used for this was a Gemini 3 Pro. And I just wanted to give it a, a, a test to see how well, how far we've come. And um, so what I did was just, uh, they had the example for the mics, uh, mic input, and I just took that, told the uh, um, Gemini, Pro, hey, this is what I need. I need you to take this uh, in, uh, mic input, start up a web server, and develop some simple web apps that, that uh, does um, view meter. And um, surprisingly, it did a really good job. I mean, I only had to really tweak it here and there on my end, but overall, it's uh, you know, once it got on the right path, it uh, you know. It gives you something that, that's good enough, uh, especially for my use case, right? I just wanted some uh, simple video meters. I did not care about it being audio or have uh, the latency. Uh, again, I, it latency and um, accurate reproduction of audio signals like DB levels wasn't what I wanted. I just wanted something for the visuals. And uh, using Gemini 3 Pro, and I also tried uh, DeepSeek. They, they end up doing a, a, a decent job at it. Um, however, you, you tend to hit a limit at some point. Like, uh, you know, it would do about 90% of things right, do one thing wrong, and when you ask it to fix that wrong thing, you just end up in one of these like uh, loops, where it would fix that, but then change something else, and then uh, you tell it, no, go back to the old one, and then it would go back to the old one, but, you know, present you the, the broken part you wanted to originally fix so you, you just hit that limit and it's like okay I, I kind of feel where that's where uh, uh, a human being with uh, experience would uh, take you that last 10 percent of, of the step but for my use case uh, really um, I really like this device and um, again the nice thing about when you're doing firmware for M5 uh, devices is that the firmware is fairly portable like uh, I was able to also implement a version of the firmware for my uh, Tab 5 uh, and uh, obviously the Tab 5 device is way overkill for this but the Tab 5 has the advantage, it has a nice big screen so you could uh, do on screen uh, uh, VU meters and frequency uh, spectrum analyzer as well but uh, you know at a cost of say $60 versus $30 if my ultimate goal is just uh, web apps then yeah this is a, a much better deal and, but it, the, the firmware would also um, run on other M5 uh, devices because they, they have a really good uh, hardware abstraction layer, so makes that it makes it pretty easy to uh, implement the firmware across devices. All right, that's it for today, guys. Um, I'm gonna post all the links to the GitHub, and um, if you want to try it on out, uh, you know I did post uh, the firmware on the through the M5. Burner app, so just uh, search for Mic Talk, and it, you should get it for either one of the either the Tab Five or the the Caputo Advance.